to another video. Today, I want to talk about the subconscious mind. I want to talk about how the subconscious mind does not understand the word no. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad I caught you live. Talk about alignment. Love you. Yeah, you are in alignment. That's so beautiful. So yeah, we're going to be talking about how our subconscious mind does not understand no. And so sometimes the gods in creating their reality, they're creating by default because they spend so much of their time with their spoken word talking about the things that they do not want. And so since the subconscious mind does not understand no, then they're manifesting the thing they don't want. And they're wondering why. And then the gods say, well, why me, God? Why? Because you ask. You asked for it and didn't realize that do not is something that the subconscious mind is not comprehending for you. So say for example, you say, come on, let's hurry up and get up out of the house. I don't want to be caught in traffic. And then you get on the road, bam, traffic manifested because you're God and that's why. Because your subconscious mind didn't understand, do not. I don't want to be in a relationship like that. Bam, you in that kind of relationship. I don't want to be broke. Bam, you're broke. I don't want to, whatever. I don't want to go to the store and be caught in the long line. Then every time you go to the Walmart, all of the people, all of the little cash cashiers, they only break when you go. So you have to stand in a long line because you said what you did not want and therefore you created resistance so you gave it energy so it magnified for you and acts and you shall receive. You see how that goes? They have this song. Now I'm not the best singer. I can't be good at everything. That's how I put it. But I'm going to try to sing a little verse, the chorus of this song, how, how we be wobbling and don't even realize it. Even some of our music we listen to be talking about the things that we don't want and it be our jam sometimes. Like, right? They got this song and say, I only want you to love. I don't want nobody else. You see that? So the first verse was, I only want you to love. That was focus. That was alignment. I only want you to love. I'm looking at you. I'm giving you that attention. I'm allowing this energy to grow with you. I'm using you as my object of attention to focus on love. I only want you to love. And then that go down time. That go out wobbling thoughts. That go resistance. I don't want nobody else. Now just with that sentence alone, I don't want nobody else allows your subconscious mind to create by default a whole bunch of body else's. <laughs> you see what I'm saying here? So now you're thinking about the others. Well, what if this love is not the love for me? What if there's some other greater love? What if there's a taller man, a finer chick, a jazzier person? What if? You see what I'm saying? So now you can create it by default, instead of being a conscious creator, by using that person as your object of attention and, and saying yes to that love. And so we do this uh, here unbeknownst to us, right? We do this unbeknownst to us because we don't realize how powerful our spoken word is and how powerful our thoughts are. Meanwhile, our thoughts are feminine energy and they give life to other thoughts. And they create new thoughts. So, so you was doing good for that example for that song. I only want you to love. You was creating more powerful thoughts about only having this person to love. And allowing that love to blossom. And it was growing and growing and growing. But then when you said I do not. Then you gave it power. The thing's endless possibility. Of I do not want anybody else. It's like your subconscious mind heard you say. I want somebody else. Because if you just take the do not <laughs> out of there, it's telling your subconscious mind, since your subconscious mind does not understand do not, it's telling your subconscious mind that, oh wait, hold up, I want somebody else. And so how do we get out of this here, this, 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 this creating by default versus being a conscious 
creator? How do we destroy that, 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 that resistance that we just created by saying, I don't want nobody else? We destroy that resistance by going general, by going general. And I often tell the people that I consult with to ask yourself why. That's the perfect way to get out of your negative thoughts. See, the thing about this game of life is that it's all mental. And that <laughs> your thoughts become things whether you want to accept that or not. And so you got to get to the point in your journey where you are uh, observer of your thoughts. You're consciously observing your thoughts because you're the observer. You're not the body. You have a body. You're not even the mind. You have a mind. You're actually the observer of the body and the mind, God. So when you get to the place in your physical reality where you can observe your thoughts while you're working or washing dishes or you're on your little default setting and you have these thoughts that's just flowing through because the thoughts ain't never going to stop. We're all consciousness. These thoughts are flowing through. You have the ability to step out and be the observer of those thoughts and ask yourself why. Why am I thinking this here? Oh, because you're afraid. So when you ask yourself why, the next question you can give yourself after you get that answer, because it's gonna to lead to some emotion, because, because it's gonna to lead to some trauma. When you get to the trauma and understand that it is a trauma related thought that you had that had you thinking in fear, <laughs> then you can go and release the resistance of that thought and you could be again to give life a birth to a new thought and give momentum to a new thought by saying but what if this time things are going to be different so now you didn't gave you didn't you didn't acknowledge that there was fear you're not you're not creating more resistance by ignoring the fact that you were afraid but then you lighten the blow of whatever that thought was and say well what if it it turns out to be better this time and so now since you have created a new thought now you give it momentum to the happier version of that thought because you're always having two thoughts this is what we always do and you're the operant power here but you're always going to have two thoughts with everything and maybe that'll be a loving thought or fearful thought and they're pretty much all day competing with one another all of your thoughts the one that manifests in your physical reality is the one that you gave more energy to. You gave more momentum to, God. And so that should be the one of love. Because even in the biblical text, it says, God has not given you the spirit of fear. So that should cancel out the fearful thought. But of power and of love and a sound mind. So when you have the, a sound enough mind, God, in your reality, where you can look at your body, your mind as the observer, that's a person that's a conscious creator. That's a person that has a sound mind. That's a person that knows the secret to the game of life. That's the person that's deliberately asking for the right type of things to have in their physical reality. When you get to that place in your journey, now you're successfully a conscious creator. And not creating by default. And not turn it around and say, well, why me? Why does this keep happening to me? Why why my outcome keep on changing in, in, into something that I, I don't want? Or something that is, is, is no longer serving me. And then I can see this other person here, one of my other reflections. They're soaring in their life. Why is that? What is the difference between me and them? Are they blessed and I'm not? Are they tapped in and I'm not? No, baby. Everybody have the innate ability to tap into source energy by being the observer of the body, by being observer of the mind, by asking themselves why, by releasing the resistance, going general, and thinking a new thought. By in the biblical text, they call this "Let this mind be in you." <laughs> that thought is not robbery to be equal with God. Church people, you remember that one. So that's the key. That's the secret. It's almost like. It's almost like having a bully, these negative thoughts. It's like having a bully at school. And you know it's lunchtime and you're scared to go outside because you know this bully normally picks on people. You wondering, I'm sorry about that. I forgot to turn my phone off and so I'm going to be getting text messages and calls. I forgot to turn the do not disturb on and my phone is like a little hot pocket. <laughs> but it's almost like
like having a little bully. And this little bully, um, this little bully waits outside at a certain time for lunchtime to steal everybody's money, like, right? And so you, let's pretend for a moment that you, you, it's time for you to go for lunch and now you're fearful of this bully. Fearful energy. You're thinking about him. You didn't create it life into him you gave him energy because you're thinking about him now you get out there and he's like um where my money at and you just you just surrender to him you just you just sit there and you start sweating profusely when you look upon him you're looking at his arms and and you're looking at the other people that see you about to get your butt beat by the bully and all of these thoughts are going to your mind and you done created momentum for these thoughts to speed up, to get greater, and now you feel like a little bitty midget to the bully when really and truly you and the bully are in the same grade. You and your bully, the bully ain't that much bigger than you, but you didn't created this energy for these thoughts about this bully. You just gave the bully life. Not only did you give the bully life, but <laughs> now since you gave him life and you made him feel powerful, he has the courage now to go pick on somebody else. And so not only is he getting his lunch money from you, but he's getting his lunch money from, from other people. It's about five of y'all little ducks at recess or at lunchtime getting punked by this one bully. Meanwhile, they have other children that ain't never experienced no bully. But you gave, you was the one child that gave the bully life. You gave the bully life. And the bully is equivalent to your negative thoughts. So you spend your days, your nights, your, even your weekends dreading going back to school because you afraid of the bully. You afraid of the bully. But in order to overcome the bully or those negative thoughts, you got to face them. You got to face your negative thoughts to overcome them. So one day when you get tired of getting your lunch money taken from you and you get really, really hungry, or when you conjure up the energy to not be afraid of the bully no more, one day you just sick and tired of being sick and tired and you face the bully and you just surrender and you just like, look, you just going to have to beat my butt today because... I'm going to eat. I'm going to fight back. Now, this is equivalent to you saying to those negative thoughts, why? Why am I thinking this? This is equivalent to you standing up to your negative thoughts. All of the beautiful things that we could think about and we thinking about this God, man. But why? That's equivalent to that. So you stand up to the negative thought and then you say to the negative thought, But well, what if the bully is afraid too? <laughs> you say to the negative thought, so but what if this here thing happens instead? You know, what if this here time it is not about my trauma? And you're turning the cheek. This is equivalent to the biblical text. When it says if, if somebody hit you or smacked you on the face or whatever, you turn the other cheek. This is what the biblical text was teaching you, God. You turn the other cheek. And you begin to think a new thought. It wasn't telling you to stand up there and get your ass beat by the bully. It wasn't telling you to just surrender and let your days be hard days and long suffering. No, it was telling you to think a new thought. <laughs> get into the right hemisphere of the brain instead of the wrong one. That's what it was saying to you. So you change your thoughts and you say, well, what if it's not going to turn out to be this way? What if, what if? What if things were working out for me? What if today I get to eat? What if he, what if he was homesick, big bully, and he's not going to be at recess? What if I don't think about him at all? What if I think about the class after the recess or lunch period, the class that I love so much? What if I think about going to that class and thinking about seeing my friend there and I ignore the fact that lunchtime or the time that I'm supposed to bump into this bully is before that class and I just focus on feeling good in that class because that class really makes me feel good because it brings out all of my creative ability. What if I give energy to that and I destroy the bully by not giving him any energy? What would happen? What would happen to the bully? If everything is mental, all things are mental, wouldn't the bully disappear? So that's the secret to it all. Instead of saying, boy, I don't like going to school because there's the bully. Boy, I don't like when it's lunchtime because the bully. <laughs> because all of that I do not stuff 
is giving energy to the bully and the bully is becoming greater your thoughts are becoming greater and they are controlling your physical reality so don't sit there and ask yourself why why you create why this is happening to you no 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 why is because you are the creator why is because you did that to yourself why is because you need to be accountable for your thoughts why because you are a conscious creator not a creator that's creating by default that's why why is because you sat in the body and you thought you were the body no you are not the body no you sat in your mind thinking constantly over and over and you one day got tripped out in that mind because there's so many portals in that mind and you begin to think that you were the mind no you are not the mind no you are not the body you are the observer of the mind you're the observer of the body and until you get back on the throne of god and assume your position your role and your life your reality will not change <laughs> so talk about the things that you want Speak on the things that you want. I'm sharing this with you, part of my consultation, little um, episodes or whatever I would call this here on TikTok is because when I consult with people, a lot of the people that have deeply rooted traumatic issues, they always talk about what they don't want. But I don't want this. But I don't want this. But I don't like this here. But it gets on my nerves when this here, and why is this here? And no, I don't like that. But then when I ask them, well, tell me something that you do want. You can hear crickets chirping because they don't know. They don't know how to express that side of themselves. Oh, I, I, don't, I never figured that out. I, I, I don't, I never thought about it. I, I mean, I think I want, I think I want, I think I want what everybody else wants. I just want to be happy but how can you say you want to be hey rob how can you say you want to be happy but you don't even know what the picture of happiness is for you how can you say that you got to be able to write that thing down you got to be able to imagine that thing you got to be able to experience that thing like oh no my happiness looks like this and it smells like this and it feels like this and when i touch it i can i can touch it i can even taste it because I am the creator of it. I know everything about it. <laughs> That's how deeply rooted you should be or we should be in our human imagination of how we want our life to unfold. But I get it in the physical reality. They teach us this. But that's your journey though. That's your assignment to reprogram your own mind. It's like you were programmed already by life, by the matrix, and that's part of the game. To unbrainwash yourself, meaning you gotta wash your brain again, to unprogram yourself from that to what your idea of happiness, life, joy, bliss, or whatever it is, to get to the things that you really want, and stop paying attention to those things that you do not want. Stop giving your energy to those things. Because even as far as my physical, I don't even have, I don't even have a TV in my new house. I had TVs. One, two, three, four, five. I had about six TVs in my old house that I never turned on. And I said, okay, when I get the new house, I mean, I'm not going to buy any because I don't even watch TV because I don't even need to hear anything on no program programming me. Because no, 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 all the thoughts that go up in here are the thoughts. I create. I won't hear nothing about no news. Oh, but but you gotta be safe. But you but you gotta you the outsiders. You know the people that watch the news and pay attention to the things that they do not want all day. They tell a person like me, no, you gotta be safe. You gotta hear this. And oh, they start off their sentence all the same. They say, I know you don't watch the news, but listen, I gotta tell you this. I gotta be your Debbie Downer. I gotta put some kind of some kind of wobble in your mind. So listen to what had happened on the news. Girl, they had a murder, a triple homicide, or this and that and the third. And I, I because I know that they, 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 they created that resistance in their mind to believe that it, that it is not okay. It's not okay.